Robert Wadlow was the tallest man ever. He stood 8 feet 11 inches tall and was often called the Alton Giant or the Giant of Illinois. He was the tallest person ever recorded. The tallest person in the world also had the biggest feet. He wore a size 37 double A shoe, which is the largest shoe size in the entire world. That's about three quarters of a newspaper's height. He was born in Alton, Illinois, February 22, 1918. He was the oldest of five children to Harold Franklin and Addie Mae Wadlow. When he was born, he weighed eight pounds, seven ounces, which is normal for a baby boy. He was 30 pounds at six months. About half of that is how much an average baby boy weighs. When he was five, he was five feet, four inches tall and weighed 105 pounds. And he wore clothes of a teenager. And at age eight, when he was six feet tall, he weighed in at 169 pounds. He was taller than his father. So a special desk was made for him in elementary school. Bus drivers and train conductors, they would try to make him pay an adult fare. But his father would step in and say no. At age 13, he was seven feet, four inches tall. And he was the tallest Boy Scout in the entire world. His uniform was made just for him. That Boy Scout uniform was made from 14 yards of fabric that were 36 inches wide. As a teenager, he started doing newspaper advertisements. He, his brother, and his sister opened a soda stand in their front yard. People would often come by to see Robert, even though they weren't thirsty. He wouldn't get up right away, though. He would make people pay for a drink. And then he would stand. One summer, the kids made more than $100. That's about 2,300 U.S. dollars today. And in 1936, when he graduated from Alton High School, he was 8 feet 4 inches tall. That's 254 centimeters. He told a reporter from the Chicago newspapers in 1937, I've gotten used to being stared at. To resent it would only make folks unhappy, including myself. Some people say unkind things, of course. I thought it over long ago and decided to ignore them. The worst you can say about them is that they are thoughtless. In 1937, Robert joined the Ringling Brothers and Barton Bailey Circus. He made short appearances in the ring while an announcer talked about him. He looked extremely respectable. He had a tie and dress pants on. It was all about dignity. He was very proud of how he looked. Any time that he would speak before a crowd, he always made sure his tie was straight and his coat was clean. He was cheered as well when he went to Madison Square Garden and the New York Stock Exchange. Robert, he rode in cars just like the rest of us. But the difference was the front passenger seat had to be taken out so that he could sit in the back seat and stretch out his legs. In 1938, he went on tour to promote a shoe company. The company gave him free shoes for the tour. Robert and his father went all over the country to talk to people. They went to more than 800 towns in 41 states. People still send photos of these events to the Alton Museum of History and Art when they find them in their photo albums or tucked away in the backside of a drawer. In that same year, Robert and his father took that trip all the way out to the West Coast of California, which included a stop in Hollywood. At MGM Studios, he posed for pictures with movie stars. He also got to meet Jack Benny. He didn't do an appearance on his show, though. But during that same trip, they took a drive up to see the big redwoods. He told his father, this is the first time in my life I ever felt small, and I like it. During many of these performances, his father would talk to the crowd about his son, and the crowd would often join in. He would put a silver dollar on top of his son's head and challenge a tall man in the crowd to try to come get it. No one ever could, though. But they always gave that dollar away because the person was a good sport and tried. Robert was a big fan of kids. And when he traveled, he made sure to stop by schools and orphanages just to say hi. His big size and the fact that he kept growing as an adult were caused by a swollen pituitary gland, which made him have an abnormally high level of human growth hormone. He was extremely healthy for the majority of his life, but in his later years, he did have trouble moving around and couldn't feel much in his feet and lower legs. As he aged, he used a cane. Robert passed away in a hotel room on July 15, 1940, at the age of 22 years old.
He got a blister on his ankle because the brace that he wore just didn't fit right. He got a high fever because the blister got infected. Robert's last words were, The doctor says I won't be able to get home in time for the party. He was talking about the party for his grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. When he passed away, he weighed 490 pounds. He was 8 feet 11 inches tall. His coffin was 10 feet 6 inches long, and it had to be carried by 18 people. Over the course of two days, more than 41,000 people came by to pay their respects. And because so many people went through the funeral home, the carpet literally had to be changed. It was worn out. In 1985, a bronze statue of Robert was put up on the campus of the Southern Illinois University School of Dental Medicine. The community continues to support and honor his family's wishes and they take extra care to make sure that items on display at the Alton Museum in Alton, Illinois, are done so with pride and dignity. These are Interesting Things with J.C.